Today we're going to cover a topic which is highly important when it comes to building sustainable teams. It has to do with leadership and how leaders create a safe environment for their uh, teams. And we are at IMD Business School and we are going to interview Professor George Corizer, who is Distinguished Professor of Leadership and Organizational Behavior. Okay, so thank you George for being with us today. It's a pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. And uh, I know that your background is in uh, clinical psychology and you're also a hostage negotiator. And at some stage in your career, you somehow started to connect the dots between um, uh, clinical psychology, hostage negotiation, and then you added leadership and yeah. you started to connect those yeah. uh, areas. Yeah. And I'm curious to understand back then, uh, what was your motivation to do that? Yeah. And also, I think that's the point where back in 2002, uh, you founded and created the concept of high performance yeah. leadership yeah. and created the program for yeah. um, that you're running now uh, successfully at IMD Business yeah. School. Yeah. So what was your motivation uh, back then? Well, it's a very interesting evolution because I started out wanting to be a mediator. Mm -hmm. And in clinical psychology, mediation was the focus. Okay. I very quickly got pulled into hostage negotiation because I was working with domestic violence. Okay. And I soon realized that hostage negotiation is about leadership, self-leadership, leading others, leading organizations or mm -hmm. teams. And that didn't emerge into the leadership aspect mm -hmm. because I was doing conflict management then. So yeah. it was mediation, hostage negotiation, conflict management. And then the piece of the puzzle started coming together. Good conflict management, good hostage negotiation has to do with leadership. and. I was doing mostly training in conflict resolution and mm -hmm. how to deal with difficult conversations and all those areas. And then it slowly evolved into leadership okay. because it was mm -hmm. leading self and leading others. That's the major link. And so I was very blessed to see those dots connected. And then when I got involved here with IMD, it was a real blessing because it quickly went from conflict management to leadership to the eventually the high performance leadership program. Okay, so it had to do originally with how do you lead yourself in difficult yeah. situations yeah. and then how do you lead others yeah. in such situations? Yeah. Yeah. As a hostage negotiator, you have to be able to manage your own emotions, your own mindset, your own way of being mm -hmm. to effectively get the higher levels of success that hostage negotiators get, which is about 95%. So starting with leading yourself, then leading others, yeah. influencing yeah. others, and then influencing the teams that you are working with. Uh -huh. And the HPL program has grown and developed very uh, nicely over the years. This year, I think you're going to celebrate 100 editions of the program. We're tremendously <laughs> blessed. 100 sessions, over 5,000 graduates. Right. <clears throat> and it started in 2002 as a focused leadership program, yeah. but a special one. It had to do with bringing in the latest research on emotional intelligence, the latest research on mm -hmm. neuroscience, the mind's eye, the relationship through the bonding cycle and grief. So it suddenly started coming together into a leadership package and then we kept adding every year another kind of component. We have those basic pillars that we focus on yeah. in the HPL program. And it is a leadership program that's very different because of its high level impact on emotional intelligence. Yeah. And yeah, I was going to ask what makes it so special because when we ask uh, alumni and program participants, how was the week, how was the HPL program for you? Their testimonial is quite often like, come on, it was life-changing. Yeah. And I'm wondering, how can a program be life-changing in a week? What is so special yeah. about the program? Most, so there's the emotional intelligence, yeah. and what else? Most participants come out saying this was a transformational moment. Mm -hmm. Because when you are leading, it's not just a technique. It's not just a set of behaviors that you do. Mm -hmm. It's not a coat or a dress or a jacket that you put on. It's who you are. 
This program is aimed to help understand the early foundations of leadership, mm -hmm. what your relationship was with secure bases, positive, negative experiences, and then as you go through your history mm -hmm. and your lifeline of leadership, you can understand where the strengths are and where the crucibles or the, mm -hmm. the, the, the yeah. painful events occur. So this unravels those. And we deal with a very special thing, which is separation, yeah. how to deal with loss, and the whole behavioral economics process of understanding that people are primarily motivated by the anticipation of loss yeah. rather than the benefit. Although the people who are really playing to win are going to be focused on the benefit. And this program then takes people into not just the mindset of leading, but into the emotions of leading. Mm -hmm. How do you create the most authentic, impactful state that you can be in mm -hmm. to influence yourself first of all, but then to influence others. And we get very high level people from organizations, how to influence an organization, and, and especially how to bring the strategies into life. Yeah, and that's also the person effect. That's the person that, effect, yeah. 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 Who you are as a leader, mm -hmm. what person effect do you have? Yeah. Okay, so there are a lot of definitions of leadership, and I'm curious to understand what is your uh, definition of the pillars of high performance leadership. Yeah. So there are many definitions of leadership and many description of different types of leadership. I think essentially leadership is about being able to create a vision, to know where you're going, and to lead and assert yourself in that direction towards a result, and to bring others by your influence and the way that you deal with them into teamwork into working together to get a result at the end. And by the way, the way you do this is first of all by mindset. Leadership is fundamentally a mindset which translates into a state of behavior, a state of being to be able to influence others. How do you focus? How do you use your mindset to either play to win or play not to lose? One is driven by uh, fears, other is driven by the seeking of an opportunity, an outcome. Secondly, you have to be able to bond, to connect. The number one reason leaders fail is because they don't connect in one form or another. It may be how they talk, it may be their person effect, it may be the way they uh, interact with others, but how you connect, how you bond, and part of that is to understand in the bonding process, we always are going to face loss and separation. How do we let go? How do we reconnect? And then building trust. The third pillar is around the secure base. How do we build trust and have people who are inspired by what you're doing because they know that you are a trustworthy person? We know that leaders often lose that sense of trust because they do not effectively deliver on what they're going to say and they can't create that foundation of protection in order to take risks, explore, and do new creative things. And how to engage in dialogue, how to be able to interact with someone who has a different opinion, a different idea, and how to deal with conflict. It becomes fundamental to understand how we handle differences and conflict. And that dialogue, that conflict resolution, is all connected to the power of language, how you use words, and how you are in a certain state in using those words. And then to eventually turn to the idea of con uh, concession making and negotiation. Good leadership is the ability to build alliances, as you move forward, building teams, going to the implementation of a strategy or a vision, how do I negotiate and be able to make concessions along the way that you can live with? Agreements. And lastly, how to have energy. To be a good, high-performing leader, you have to be able to create energy. If you're not energized, and inspiring, you're not really leading. You may be managing, you may be doing something else, but leaders inspire. And that doesn't mean you have to be an extreme extrovert. It doesn't even mean you have to be an extrovert at all, because introverts 
interesting enough, are generally more effective in leading than our extroverts, as long as they create the energy to inspire. The problem is with extroverts is they often take too much space. So this whole combination is like a puzzle. Bringing those pillars together will make you essentially a high-performing leader if you can deliver on those. That brings us to the whole question of authenticity. If you are charismatic naturally, or you're inspiring naturally, well and good, but it has to be authentic. However, if you are a deep introvert, if it's not something you normally can do, you have to train yourself to be authentically able to create that inspiration, create authentic charisma. So energy is part of leading. It takes energy to lead. It takes energy to get your teams going. And after a while, it becomes a give and take that the energy flows off of one another. So there's all different ways to describe different types of emotion as part of being a good leader. But what's important to remember is authenticity of who you are as a person. So George, thank you so much for uh, being with us today and sharing some of your insights on leadership. I have one last question for you. Uh, you have obviously an incredible track record, both as a person and professional. And I'm wondering what are your um, some of your dreams and, uh, and projects for the future? Well, leadership is very important to me. It's a calling to be able to teach leadership and to help leaders develop. But my vision is to take leadership into youth and young people mm -hmm. to help them understand that leadership begins as a child, be continues as an adolescent, and how they can develop their leadership skills. Then the other arena is those who are retired, those who move mm -hmm. into new spaces of transition, how they can pull their resources together and influence other people through that whole process of influencing others to be better leaders. And in the end, Fred, the whole thing that really drives me is leadership should be a passion, should be an adventure. I see teaching leadership being a leader as an adventure that's very special. And when people lose that sense of adventure and they no longer want to fight for something in that leadership or they no longer see the beauty of what's involved in leading, then something is lost. And I see that happen very often when leaders lose their dream or they become hostages to mm -hmm. someone or something or even to themselves. Mm -hmm. Leaders have to be able to live their dreams with full joy and to keep moving when things go bad, to re, uh, rehabilitate yourself, come back and find a new dream on the way. So very inspiring. Thank, Thank you, you very much, okay. George. It's a pleasure to yeah. be here. Thank you.